uh, uh, <coughs> we're all related, we're all of common ancestry. Uh, as you may have noticed, I have uh, two kinds of names, one English, one Nochanos. I will attempt to speak from both uh, perspectives in my presentation. Recently, an old growth tree spoke. And there's a lot of story behind an old growth tree speaking. But recently, an old growth tree spoke and said, there are not many of us left. And I think that speaks to Canada, essentially, although the tree spoke from, from the west coast of Vancouver Island, where, where I'm from. And it's not the first time that uh, uh, there's been a communication with, uh, with a tree to a human. And it, it's the tree who spoke first and made a conversation, connected, communicated with what we call human. Right? From a neutral perspective, it is quite, it's a bit different from a tree and a human. For we understand trees to be a kuas, I'm a kuas. A tree is a kuas. We are both beings of the same kind. And we can communicate with each other. Speaking from the perspective of uh, a Nuchanos or an indigenous or an aboriginal understanding of the natural world and the meaning of the natural world for us as a place, a home for biodiversity, for plants and animals that supports all life. And from the scientific perspective, from the Western world perspective then, some believe this natural world to be no accident. Others don't agree. But from the natural perspective, the world does appear to be purposeful. And the natural laws that we have learned from it supports this idea. So the constant question before me in this presentation is what is the natural world? What is it? And from the channel perspective, perhaps uh, increasingly from the scientific perspective today with contemporary research, it is a dynamic cycle of life and death. It has a life of its own beyond human life. It has a life of its own beyond human life. We are a small but significant part of it. And the natural world uh, takes care of itself. It is self-determining. It is self-governing, if you will, from a human perspective. And natural world doesn't need us. We need it. So in spite of the great knowledge gained by science, yet it remains mostly, this natural world, a mystery and that is corroborated by one of your own great scientists, Albert Einstein, who made some kind of comment that we know just a small smidgen of a percentage of what nature has to teach us. That is, Western science only knows a small percentage of what nature has to teach. So where I come from then, there's communication, there's language, if you will, although it's debatable whether language as we know it is the medium of communication between tree and tree, tree and human, wolf and deer, deer and deer, geese and geese, and on and on and on. So this place, this natural world where we live then, uh, is a place where resources are held in common. They are juxtaposed, resources are juxtaposed with life forms, diversity, that hold these resources in common. So we have a potential here with this juxtaposition of resources to ask the question, well, what are we going to do? And of course, what we have done historically uh, is um, war, domination, destruction. It's a choice. It's a choice that beings make about resources that are juxtaposed with biodiversity. But to ancient Nochanos, this natural world is a creation. 
and its laws when they are discovered are guidelines. And the laws are told in story, story by Son of Raven about coyote, bear, wolf, deer, and eagle. Also, this natural world is sensible in the sense that it, has, it is sensing. It has senses. It knows pain, and it knows love. And these opposites, like good and evil, are brought together in one word in our language for love, nochanos, which is the same word for pain. So the polarity of reality in our language is brought together, unified, and made one. And that is a tremendous philosophical introduction to Philosophy 101. So Nuchanos' uh, word that reflects this reality, Yaakmis then, it's where resources are first taken by brute force, and domination means pain. So the story of Bear, who first took some salmon out of a Nuchanos trap and wrecked the trap, and a, a long, long story brought short is that what began with, with brute force and pain and domination ended up through hard work, through endurance, through patience, through maturity, the development of protocols between the Nachanov and the bear to share the resources that are held in common, resources that are juxtaposed between biodiversity. Right? It takes hard work. There are two different species as different as Chinese from Nochanos or European from the African peoples. But the story of Bear here in Nochanos is a principle of working different kinds of beings who speak different languages, who have different ways of communication, who look different, who dress different, who are in fact outwardly so different that I was told when I was in Poland one time, look, you're so exotic, all you have to do is show up. <laughs> So the story of Bear then teaches us that resource sharing is a possibility, it's a potential. It isn't an actuality, it doesn't happen naturally. It has to happen through conscription of reality by the beings themselves. And some of these we can constitutionally label recognition, mutual respect, and things that none of us like, hard work. Natural world is a teacher then for us. The natural world is a teacher. For young people, I want to address the young people of Canada directly on this issue from an Aboriginal perspective, Nochanal perspective. Visions await you. Visions await you. And from the ancient people, without visions, of course, they are nothing. They are nothing without visions. You begin a great life and a great progress pilgrimage through life through first allowing yourself to be accessed by, confronted by, and to communicate with vision. And not just any vision. It's got to be a great vision. It's got to be a good vision. And according to the beaver people, it's got to be a strong dream. So we have a strong dream for Canada. And the young people are the hope for that. True, aha, una.